Hey, everybody, and welcome again to the DLF Trade Show and the DLF YouTube channel. So weird that we happen to be wearing the exact same clothes as last week. It is just a weird coincidence. We didn't even plan this. Nope, not at all. So weird. So weird. <laughs> But we are back again. Last week, we did trade targets for your rebuilding team. We're moving on to trade targets for your contending team. And, well, look, it always feels weird to trade for aging assets and stuff like that after the actual point scoring season ends. But you want to keep your team competitive. You want to trade for players when points don't matter because then their value is less. I mean, the first player we're talking about is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers' value right now is really low. But when the season, the point scoring season rolls around and he's the starting quarterback for the Jets with Brees Hall behind him, throwing to Garrett Wilson and hopefully someone else they bring in. Their catch rookie passes. wide receiver too here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, Randall Cobb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like his values, I mean, it, and clearly it's Aaron Rodgers. His value isn't going to spike all that much anymore because he's 74 years old, but it's going to spike in general. So you want to buy low. That's the whole thing, right? So let's just jump straight in, right? In a 12 team super flex league, James Cook, a 24 second early, and Aaron Rodgers were traded for Cooper Cup. Man, James Cook in here at 130 might be a little too low right now. And the thing is, like, December ADP is already posted and probably did not take into account the past three, four weeks he's been scoring. Like, ever since getting the new offensive coordinator, he's been a part of that offense, which has never actually used a running back before. So I'm yeah. very curious to see what his value does in the non-point scoring season. Yeah. But, but right now, James Cook at 130, the early second at 130, and Aaron Rodgers in at 61. Cooper Cup three oh sorry for a total of three twenty one. Cooper Cup at three eighty three point five by himself. I'm gonna try and pretend that this is not in, like my mindset doesn't involve this week for this trade. Let's pretend the finals happened and it's over. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting with Cooper Cup on your team, and someone offers you a twenty four year old running back, an early second, and who is probably going to be the QB three on your team right now. I think I take that. I, I take I, it. <laughs> it's not a smash anything. Like to me, it's fine. The value. Because again, the second point scoring season ends. Cooper Cup is not going to be worth 383.5. You know, he's going to be a 31 year old running back, a running back, 31 year old wide receiver coming into next season. Even though, again, age has zero to do with Cooper Cup's game, it doesn't matter because he can blink and all of a sudden he's past the defender wide open in a zone that people just didn't feel like guarding, you know, it's, that's just what Cooper cup does and he'll still be going to breakfast every day with Matt Stafford. So everything will be fine. But like, since it's the non point scoring season and we're just looking at roster building, I think I go with cook the early second and Rogers, especially in this draft where an early second can net you a pretty decent player. Yeah. This one for me, like this feels like, getting off of Cooper cup right before the age cliff, like really sets in. Like we're looking at like what happened, what's happening with Devonte Adams right now. Cooper cup, honestly is probably valued closer to Devonte Adams. Now think about what's going to happen during the off season when we're starting to look at, you know, Puka entering year two, Cooper cups going to be 31. Uh, we just mentioned that James cook should be valued way higher in this analyzer. I mean, he's already this, this value for him right now is based on him being RB 14 in, in December ADP. Uh, but even then that should probably be a little bit higher when you consider, especially in the off season, he'll be over Alvin Kamara, maybe over Josh Jacobs. You start getting him over uh, Rashad white, even too. you start putting him up more with Saquon Barkley and Kenneth Walker. That's more of a top 10 running back than top 15. So that increases his value. And then Aaron Rodgers is just sitting down there at 60 for whatever reason. I mean, even if you add like 61, show some respect, 61, my bad. It just feels like, all three of those pieces, even that second rounder, all three of those pieces should gain value during the offseason. And you're getting an asset in Cooper Cup. You're getting rid of an asset in Cooper Cup that's probably going to lose a lot of value in the offseason. Yeah, I mean, and again, just so we can put the same perspective on Cup than we are on the Rodgers, Cup's going to gain value the second point just starting score to get scored again. That's sure. what he does. But also the perspective of you have two assets that are probably going to be gaining value as well, as opposed to just the one. 
I, I think it's a smart move. And, and don't get me wrong, if you have a team that is just depth heavy, consolidating is the right move. And but I don't know if I like I don't think I know I don't think I I think this is it though. I, I, I think I aimed in a different direction than Cooper Cup. Yeah, yeah, that's what I that's that's the right answer is just get somebody that's not Cooper Cup. The next trade is a 24 mid first in Aaron Rodgers for Brock Purdy. Uh, mid first in at 336. Aaron Rodgers still at 61 for a total of 397. Brock Purdy 472. So this absolutely falls short of the analyzer value and falls short of the overpay for the better at better asset. How like what what's your idea of Brock Purdy's like ranking right now in Superflex ADP? Purdy is QB 14. Um, in that second end, the wow, end of the second startup rounds around pick 19 ish. Um, I mean, ADP wise, that feels a little early, but I also I'm on board around that QB 14 area. All of that being said, this would have to be more early than mid for me to do this trade. I think if I remember correctly, this is literally like the (laughs) 1.06. It's December. We have a whole long time until the NFL draft, no less our rookie drafts. But as of right now, we have Caleb, Drake, May, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison. This isn't in any order. Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Brock Bowers, which almost seem like a lock, lock top six. Yeah, unless something. I think Jaden Daniels is the only one that could fall out of that if he falls in the. Yeah, something weird happens. in like, Yeah. He's a late first round pick. If okay, I have Brock Purdy on my team. I don't really believe in him. I think he's not going to score like the QB seven again. You know, we have a whole lot of hurt quarterbacks. He's. I think he's more along that scoring in the QB twelve to fifteen range where he's dynasty ranked. Is the one hundred six enough for me to move him and Aaron Rodgers? Because again, you're not going to be thrilled. You know, looking at your roster in the non point scoring season and seeing a forty seven year old quarterback, but. So really, is the 106 and that extra QB enough for me to move Brock Purdy? No, because I think I can get more. Like, that's where I'm stuck. Like, if that were the 104, the answer would be yes. Like, if I have a lock on one of those three quarter, again, assuming the draft and all that goes as we, because all we could do is roll with the information we have now. If you're telling me I can get one of those three quarterbacks or Marvin Harrison, and then I get Aaron Rodgers also, I would feel a lot better about it. Yeah, I get, I honestly, I'm comfortable doing this right here. I uh, like Brock Purdy is phenomenal. I highlighted him as a massive buy load candidate, like a month and a half ago for the fantasy playoffs. Um, I really, really like Brock Purdy, but at the same time, it does feel like he is in that mold of quarterbacks because he doesn't have the mobile ability. And it seems like he's just playing highly efficient right now, which I mean, he could still play highly efficient. It is the China 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 offense. That's what they do in the offense he is, but he feels overly efficient even to that, you know, like, um, and, and so when you're relying on that, if he comes back down to earth next year, quarterbacks get healthier again. Um, and, and then you add in Caleb Williams as well too. It just feels like Brock Purdy right now is a sell high for, any any kind of these kind of where I feel like he's valued as more of a top 10 dynasty quarterback than yeah. a top 15 guy. I and, and I like buying Aaron Rodgers in this instance. I think he's going to be phenomenal next year because uh, I think he's going to have like a massive chip on his shoulder and he's going to want to prove to people that he is still Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers, still really freaking good. Um, and the 24 first is an excellent way, even as a contender, to add an additional young asset that is still highly valued and could also produce immediately on day one uh so i I mean to me i think this trade is kind of perfect for contenders i think you can argue how secure you feel with an asset uh, especially maybe a non-quarterback asset from that first round pick uh to replace the more longevity of brock purdy but i think if purdy is your qb2 i think he's easier to replace long term uh while still having the firepower of aaron Rodgers next year than you know just keeping brock purdy and bypassing the production and the first round pick. Okay. So the next player on the list is Javante Williams. And 
I love like Javante Williams is like I I was always a little against Javante Williams because his price was just and it's fallen back down to earth and Denver is doing something with their team which again the worry of an offense always lowers the price of the running back as well but I do believe in the player I always kind of have just you know the value was a little out of there um so I'm interested to look at these trades to see if it's something that I would actually be a part of. Uh, so 12 team super flex, Javante Williams. I mean, I should be letting you talk about these guys because you're the one that put this list together. Yeah. So I'll read the trade and then you talk about Javante if you want to add anything. Okay. 12 team super flex, Javante Williams for an early 24 second and Damian Pierce. Um, why don't you talk about Javante a bit and then throw what you feel about the trade? Yeah, so I included Javante in here. Uh, and I mean, it might feel weird to say, well, why am I buying a running back in December or early January for the 2024 season? So much can happen, uh, blah, blah, blah. But this offseason feels uh, very peculiar in that the running back draft class is not terrifying to replace Anyone. Any, any real running backs of of note like uh, some draft classes have in the past, but especially Javante. I mean, he's going to be entering year three um, and he's going to be going into year two off of the devastating knee injury, which everybody always says, you know, year two is the year where they kind of return to a hundred percent form of what they were doing prior to the injury. Um, And it just seems like with the volume that he has been getting over kind of the second half of the year in Denver with that offense getting better and better. um, He just seems like a, cheaper running back target that is not like james cook who's blowing up right now rashad white has been doing extraordinarily well uh for the past like seven eight nine weeks essentially um he's not an elite option like a kenneth walker or a saquon barkley or even a josh jacobs he just feels like a guy who is just kind of solid he's just middling in terms of value stop talking kenneth walker elite option he's an elite he is a top 10 dynasty running back. Elitely valued option. I'll allow that wording a little okay. better. Okay, there continue. I'm sorry. Javante just feels like he is in this mess of running backs that don't feel like difference makers, but I think he has one of the best arguments to be a difference maker in 2024. Um, so when I can make a trade like this where I can trade away a complete non-difference maker in Damian Pierce, and only add an early second round pick, you know, like the 202, 203, 204, whatever it is, Um, the the value may compile to feel kind of like a first, but you're not giving up a first. And I'm absolutely on board with that to go and buy Javante. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I don't really believe in Damien Pierce. I mean, he's back and Devin Singletary is still getting the workload. And it's a prime spot to add another body, even though like we, we just said that no running backs in this draft are really good enough to make you worry but when you have a whole lot of mediocrity you know it it gets a little worried that they're just going to add bodies to try and compete which could lead to you know three somebody doing something unexpectedly yeah prime go get the better player and and javante is that like if you're telling me this is the 201 i probably don't want to do it like just because if it's that early of a second but if we're talking closer like the 204 205 i think i do that for javante again because of the insanely weak running back class we're running into then again you don't need to fill starting lineups in December or January. You might have to in December. Um, still, you're, you're getting the better player that I think will hold their value. So, yeah, I'm with right. you. Next one is interesting. Javante Williams and George Pickens for Terry McLaurin and Isaiah Pacheco. Javante Williams, 303. George Pickens, 244 for a total of 547. Terry McLaurin, 256. Isaiah Pacheco, 150 for a total of 406. I think I'm with the analyzer on this one. Usually when you have someone who is valued decently higher than on the other side, you usually, it's a sandwich. You usually have the highest valued and the lowest valued. But here, Javante is the highest and the other side has Pacheco, which is by far the lowest. Right. So like, I don't, I don't, like maybe this was made as like a playoff push move where you wanted to go get McLaurin and Pacheco because they were scoring points. Of course, Pacheco might not even play this week, but I don't know when this trade was made. But dynasty value-wise, there's nothing about this that makes me want to move Javante Williams and George Pickens for Terry, McC- Pickens for Terry McLaurin and Isaiah Pacheco. There's like there's nothing that makes me want to move in that direction. No, it feels like a bunch of staleness in McLaurin and Pacheco. Like, they are fine. They get yeah, they're good enough. 
They're fine. There's just nothing really all that special about either one of them for fantasy to where Javante and George Pickens, they have that luster, but they also have, I feel like the same floor as Pacheco and McLaurin. Um, yeah. Yeah. This one was a weird one for sure. Uh, whenever I saw it in the trade finder, but I was like, again, just another example of kind of how you can work a trade by having, if you had one of those like, lower valued running backs like a David Montgomery or an Isaiah Pacheco or a, a Jalen Warren, who's gained a lot of value um, Damian Pierce uh, and, and how you can kind of get up into the Javante Williams tier by working and adding some pieces on both sides. It's almost almost like not having a trade deadline is good for the rebuilding teams. <laughs> Argument made. Done. <laughs> so let's move on to the one player I did suggest. And I honestly think that this guy is good for both sides of this conversation. And that's DJ Moore. DJ Moore will eternally be 22 years old, even though he is actually 26. But I mean, still young for a wide receiver. And again, it's a wide receiver that doesn't depend on speed. And that's usually what we are always worried about when they get old. You get old, just slow down. You get old, your knees aren't what they used to be. But like, we have seen that age does not affect route running. And DJ Moore is very, very good at route running. Um, so I am all about DJ Moore on your competing teams and not competing teams because one or one of two things is going to happen. The Bears do not draft a quarterback and they bolster their team and their offense gets better, which case that's good for DJ Moore. Or... DJ Moore has Caleb Williams throwing him the ball. Neither of those are bad. Yep. So, so like, I, I really think that Caleb Williams, no, well, yes, go get Caleb Williams, regardless of what team your team is doing. Um, so I think regardless of what direction you're going, DJ Moore is absolutely the way to go. Of course, it aims a little more towards competing because he's 26 and not 22, but I just I, I've always been a DJ Moore fan and I love that it's finally he got a quarterback that can use him because it's been 19, 20, 21, 22, almost five years of, of having to wait for it. Um, 18, almost six years. And if you're I mean, if you're DJ Moore himself watching this, I mean, he probably feels like it was back to Maryland. That yeah. feel like he, he's been waiting forever. <laughs> I know. Right. Um, and DJ, we know you watching all of um so 12 team super flex this is a big boy trade mm -hmm. aj brown dj moore and baker mayfield for trevor lawrence and kyle pitts so this is the team of that is competing and went and got aj brown dj moore and baker mayfield and moved on from the dynasty value of trevor lawrence and kyle pitts um aj brown 799 dj moore 268 baker mayfield 80 I'm rounding up 79.2 to 80 because he deserves that respect um, for a total of 1146. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of broke myself on that one. Trevor Lawrence, 696. Kyle Pitts, 255. Caution, T. May is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal, but that doesn't really matter. For a total of 950.3, that's the part that does matter. So again, like we're talking about two 26-year-old wide receivers and a 28-year-old quarterback. 28, a quarterback isn't a big deal to me. And I firmly believe that Baker is in Tampa. I, like, I know he's not signed for the future, but it's going too well. And they don't really have any better options out there. And not to mention that they're not going to might not be able to keep Mike Evans, depending on what those prices look like. And Tampa right now in a wild, in a wild card spot. So they're not going to have, the ability to draft a QB that will walk in as a starter. You know, maybe they take a risk on one of the, at the end of the first beginning of the second, if they could move up to take one of these quarterbacks. But like to me, Baker's still there next year. Yeah. If anything, this puts them in a let's replace Mike Evans in a draft full of very large wide receivers, uh, a very good Mike Evans potentials. <laughs> yeah. Um, all of that being said, it hurts to pick against Trevor Lawrence, but I think I take the wide receivers in Baker Mayfield. Like it's the fact that it's two very good wide receivers, DJ Moore's value. I think 
going up, like I don't think DJ Moore's value go down goes down. And again, if it does, it's only because we're adding more of these rookie wide receivers in front of him, not because he's moving down for any reason. Mm-hmm. Because again, there are only two things that can happen in the draft. And I think they are both good for DJ Moore. If the bears draft Marvin Harrison jr. Have no mistake, like no mistakes. That is good for DJ Moore. We have seen many, 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 many teams do have two wide receivers that do well in real life and in fantasy and having to take four guys from the defense and shift them to the other side is a great thing for DJ. Moore. <laughs> Very fair. Yeah. Not verbally. They will need to do that for Marvin Harrison jr. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) And and, and don't get me wrong, like rebuilding teams would probably love to get Lawrence, love to get Pitts, move off from the 26 year old wide receivers and definitely move off from Baker. Because again, while Baker will be around, you don't feel great having him on your rebuilding team. You feel great having Trevor Lawrence. But I still think the value of those wide receivers is just better than Lawrence and Pitts. This is a fantastic example of how to move away from upside and potential and raw dynasty value and and just go right over into points (laughs) that also hold a ton of dynasty value you know yeah like dj moore is gonna keep his late first value aj brown is worth a first plus maybe two two first first, depending on where they are um and and baker like i i don't know if like let's pretend right now we get a notification hold on let me check my phone to see if we got any notifications we did get a trade offer nope no notifications of a contract extension for baker mayfield just wanted to check um like i don't think like he's probably still worth just two seconds as opposed to a first but like that's not bad all of like putting all of that together if we're crossing out aj brown and trevor lawrence dj moore and kyle pitts by themselves even in the analyzer are practically even Mm -hmm. So free Baker. Yeah. Yeah. That's this to, to me. I'm taking the AJ Brown, DJ Moore, and Baker Mayfield side for sure. Yeah. And, and don't, and again, while I would love having Lawrence and Pitts on my rebuilding team, it feels like you tried a little too hard just to get youth and, <laughs> and upside. And, and not like too much, not by too, but like still, like I feel like there should have been something else or something. Mm hmm. Like if there were a late first on there, I would probably call this a push. And I know that's not small, but like that's what I feel like needs to be there to make the upside of the youth and picks worth getting rid of AJ Brown and DJ Moore. I think that's where I am. Yeah, I think. All right. And the last trade straight up DJ Moore for a mid first. And to me, this is probably what you have to do right now i did just say dj moore's worth a late first but it doesn't matter what things are actually worth when you're in the playoffs (laughs) (laughs) um so would i so again we're talking about competing teams would i send a mid first for dj moore yeah no yeah yeah like if you're telling me this is the 107 like this isn't going to be malik neighbors or brock bowers and this is the wide receiver three Running back one, QB four. It's not going to be the tight end two. That's going to be much, much later. Um, if it's in that area, yeah, I think I take DJ Moore because we've seen it. We're seeing it. He has another three, four years of peak production, you know, you know, based on people researching, you know, age and all of that stuff. So if I want him for this year and my team is a perennial contender, I feel good just putting DJ Moore on my team. Do you have to pay this? Probably not. But I don't like I don't look at this and be like, well, I said late first, so this is an overpayment. You, again, we someone still needs to score points. So this is probably might be what you have to pay if you still have to score points. Yeah. Um looking back at the league on where this pick actually was, it was a playoff first, but they got booted round one. So it's uh oh, that's what I yes. so seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um so to, to me, that's absolutely perfect with uh, going out and buying DJ Moore, just removing the doubt of that player, which is probably going to ultimately end up being a wide receiver, but probably going to be like the, the four or five in this class, like you mentioned. Uh, and just going and getting DJ Moore instead. I do think that there there's probably an argument still between DJ Moore and Odunze or Franklin or, you know, Coleman, if you have them as like the wide receiver three or the four. Um, I think Odunze is more 
consensusly the the wide receiver three right now. I think there's even a conversation between Odunze and DJ Moore. So that raises that value up a little bit to be like a, a mid first, but like a one oh six mid first, you know? Yeah, like you're gonna like a lot will change when we get draft capital and landing spots and all of that stuff. But again, all we could do is talk about what with what we know now, and we don't have, we're nowhere near that. We don't even have combine numbers, which shouldn't matter, but they do. Yeah. Um before we wrap this up, we're rejecting sending Jalen Waddle for George Kittle, right? Yeah, I want Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't even care if he's not playing this week. We'll figure something better out to do than lose that much. Hopefully, Jaden Reed comes back <laughs> for reals. Losing, like, I'm surprised we won like we did with losing with not having. Uh, we uh, who was it? It was Jaden Reed and someone else that we have on our team that didn't play this week. Jacobs didn't play. Yeah rough 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 but we won that's all that matters because and we started the know, tight end logan thomas went off this week logan thomas off last week. Week. And, and likely had a bad week last week but yeah and they both have mid matchups uh wait i think they're playing each other uh i actually don't know i'm not in week yeah. 17 mode yet <laughs> i'm not at all like the only way the only way i'm in week 17 mode is when i am dealing with Hawkinson. No, likely he's playing Miami and Logan Thomas mm. is playing San Francisco. Right. Kittle was playing that. Cause I looked that up to see what the matchup was. Kittle is playing uh, Washington. Wow. And it's according to MFL, the defenses are ranked 13th and 15th. So we can't even make a matchup decisions between likely and Logan. Thomas. Um, well, I, I leave that to you anyway, cause I don't want to make decisions. Um, but hold on, let me double check the show sheet. Yep, that's the end of the show sheet. We are done. Thank you, everyone, for being on this season's ride with us. But I mean, it's not like we're stopping. We're still we're still coming back next week. Don't even worry about that. But congratulations for all of your championships that we know you won, or all of the toilet bowls that you've won and the one hundred and one you've earned. You're welcome. No problem. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Russ Fisher, Dynasty Outhouse, Addison Hayes, Adam Mays, Hayes underscore DLF Trade Show, DLF YouTube channel. We'll catch you next time.